You're listening to The Word on the Streets with Joe Bingham, Jason Tasker, and Raj Pujada. Hello, welcome back to Word on the Streets. Here with Raj, here with Joe. Hello. Been a bit of an eventful weekend for me and Joe. We, we've just got back from Glastonbury Festival. Feeling a little bit worse for wear. Feeling a little bit like that uh, like that Titanic sub have imploded. Um, that, but Titanic, yeah. that Titanic sub was, was exciting, man. Because I got to... Was it better than Glastonbury? I think it made my Glastonbury the first two days. Because <laughs> I, got, I got there Wednesday. And obviously, like, that's all anyone was doing was just checking their phone, just being like, ah. Oh, what, for on? the sub? Yeah, man. Really? And, like, we were, like, placing bets and stuff about what artists would, like, say something about it on stage. You know what I mean? Like, would make a point about, like, oh, these fucking billionaires, but they won't save the refugees. Cause it felt like that kind of festival. And, and um, how many? Who who won? No one I saw other than Cassette Boy, who made a joke about it on stage. Oh. Mm. So yeah. who did you go and see? Mm, All right, wait, tell me who you went to see, who was the best, and who was the worst? I, I, I made a mistake on Friday. I, I gambled, assuming I wouldn't like it, and I went and saw Arctic Monkeys, and it was one of the shittiest gigs I've ever been to in my life. You see, I enjoyed it. Yeah, but you like them. I, yeah, I do like I, them, yeah. I'm like, I like the songs that everyone likes, and mm. the rest of it couldn't care less. But I was like, first night, first time I've been Glastonbury, I'll go Pyramid. Is that the first time you've been Glastonbury? Yeah. Is it? So I was like, I'll go see the headliner in it. But I'll tell you, like, they were bleeding people in the crowd. Like, where and where I was, after the first few songs, people were just walking off, just going, nah, fuck this. I'm going just going to another stage. And I thought it was mad, like, the power of, like, celebrity and, like, fandom. Because at one point, this girl fucking walked past. Uh, we're all leaving at the end of the gig, and she walks past, and she's going, but the thing is, like, you know he wanted to. You know he wanted to put on a good show, but he just couldn't because of the laryngitis, but you know he wanted to. And I was like, no, just accept you're a fucking nobody, and he doesn't give a shit about you. But you know at the I mean? same time, he did have laryngitis, and he didn't mention it once during the gig, whereas I went to watch Fred again, same kind of thing. I thought, I'd just check him out, see what he's like. The guy did like three songs on a drum machine. I thought he was gonna like have a panic attack. Who's Fred? <laughs> so he's who's a, Fred. You know he's who a, Fred again is Fred again. No, he's like a very big electronic dance music artist. He's kind of came out of nowhere the last few years. Uh, in terms of his background, he's from I think he's from uh, Ballin, but I think he, he's his dad's like the fucking fifth Earl of fucking mm. yeah, he's pretty Essex big. or some shit. Um, but yeah, it was like the biggest gig of his life, but I just thought it was a bit, he was, he was literally so tired. I, he was like, Oh my God, I'm not going like, you've literally played a drum machine for three songs. Like, whereas I thought that was one of the best shows I saw there. I'm not even joking. But why? It wasn't like, compared to, to any other electronic dance music artist you could go and see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I, yeah, but I saw Elton it was John? sad. I found it quite sad. The whole yeah, but I think Elton John. Yeah, I watched Elton John. You see, Elton John was good. The highlight of Elton John for me was um, one of the friends that I was stood with, deciding just before he went into his montage of the last few tracks that he was uh, he was absolutely starving and he was going to get something to eat. <laughs> you thought now, now is the time. <laughs> so, yeah, well, I was like, gonna, how yeah. hungry are you? No, <laughs> it's a good shout though. Everyone's going to be quiet, isn't it? Everyone's watching Elton. <laughs> like, nah. Can you imagine Elton John? It's the last show he's ever going to play. Thousands of people there. Everyone on the edge of the well, they're not sat down on the edge of their feet, and <laughs> and you just decide to go off and get some food. The audacity! But maybe he was just really homophobic. But, but maybe. But that's the thing that I found most fascinating about being there. It was like it's like everyone there is having their own festival experience. Like while we were watching Elton John, and from the looks of the photos, fucking ninety percent of people there were watching Elton John. It's fireworks going off. It's every big hit he's ever written. There's definitely some ratty little ketheads down at fucking Shangri-La while Elton John's on who haven't left. They're just watching some horrible techno and just fucking bobbing around. They probably and think they're, they're watching even, Elton John. Yeah, and they think they're having... They're, they're like, that's what they went for. They're like, this is the best weekend of my life. Yeah. They, they're not even watching Elton John. And there's some people in the healing fields doing a guided meditation or mm. getting a... Getting the palms red. Like I went and watched Fred again and as I was going in there, this woman went up to the stewards and she just went, oh, this looks very fun. But uh, I'm actually looking for the acoustic tent. Can you uh, 
tell me how to get there. Well, that's the point like, of the festival, yeah, yeah. isn't it? It's like, for everyone. Yeah, that's the thing. I was just like, that's pretty sick. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. like, if I said to you, all right, Elton John's on and Central C and Dave are on at the same time. I'd go watch Elton John. But you'd be a little bit guided, right? Nah, because I'm just like, you're never going to see everyone that's there, aren't it? So there's certain things... That's the whole point, there's isn't certain, it? Yeah, there's certain things you go just to be like, it's going to be massive. And it's like the, the prestige of it all, isn't it? You know what I mean? You're like, you could, though. You're like, you could go to one show, you could go to the other show, and then you video call each other. We did. We missed each other pretty much. We only saw each yeah. other once in passing. Saw each other the first Because day. it's just so impossible to find people there. Because there's 200,000 people there trying to meet someone. You've got no phone signal. Yeah, but you say, like, meet me at the pasta stand. Nah. That's how I know I'm a fat cunt, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> I was watching Central Sea's performance, and it panned out to the crowd, and I went, oh, pasta. <laughs> Which one was it? Was it pizza pasta? I just said pasta in big letters. Mm. <laughs> You know um, yeah, I think they. Are, I think everyone's watching the show. Right? Yeah, I'm just like, facing the other way. Like. I found that with. The, I was thinking about that about the food outlets last night. Maybe they're not allowed to like really advertise like the brand or anything like that because everything always says like pizza, pasta, or no, fried chicken or something like that. Yeah, I think stupid, I think yeah. it's more because everyone's out their head. Yeah, yeah it just needs to be very right, direct. Like, in what you're pasta. Selling. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, like fried chicken want. sold. I want pasta. Yeah, there's I, there's a, a fried chicken place that I went to on Sunday night. Absolutely unreal. Yeah. yeah. So six six so. fried chicken pieces and, and chips. So yeah, strips, yeah, chips, on bit of spring onion on there, some sriracha sauce. Oh my who god, got I was the, in heaven. Um, who got the Glastonbury ten ten seconds loving this year? Um <laughs> my partner actually, so um I'm sure she really enjoyed did you, that. Did you break the record? Did you beat Ted? No, I did. I lasted a little longer. Yeah, this eleven year. seconds, oh, get right, up. big man. There we go. Okay, fair enough. I was just yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about the submarine disaster at the time, so it made me last a little longer. Yeah, you, got hey, you don't want to implode things. thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Implosion's mad, though. Like, have you seen, like, the, 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 some, like, naval chief did some, some article where he explained, like, the science behind the implosion? And it's, it's like, like a leak, isn't it? It all happened... It all would have happened so fast that the human brain wouldn't have even been able to comprehend that it had happened. Dude, so quickest, they, were, they were dead before they even. It should be like yeah. quickest, painless, fastest death ever. I think they said it, that should be a trip if you want to commit suicide. Yeah, more yeah. like euthanasia, just uh, efficient. Yeah, tank, but euthanasia by so, tank. So what happens is there's a leak in the capsule, and you wouldn't even know there's a leak, right? And then your ear, the pressure would cause your eardrums to. And that knocks you out, and then you implode. Yeah, but you're already dead before you knocked out. So mm. the, the guy said the implosion would have taken. I think he said like between one and two milliseconds. Oh yeah, so it's all at once. Yeah, and it takes twenty five milliseconds for the human brain to register like any of your senses, basically. So that's that's, that's what he means. And he's like, you'd, you'd have been dead before any part of them even comprehend yeah but the key bit is on. that you're knocked out before that's why you don't realise what's happening I think no because if you get your head chopped off you're st- your brain's still going for about 12 seconds yeah but the, what, the, the difference with this is he but basically this man ran the numbers he was like this is how it happens you get uh, a breach in the hull then a full implosion takes between one and two milliseconds not even fast enough for the human brain to register that something's happened. And then because of all the gases that are inside the sub, the speed of it imploding also ignites the gases and causes it to immediately explode as well. And then that vaporises everyone and they all just turn to ash and end up in also, the Also, everyone's vaporised. You can't even, yeah. get a, can't even get a body or anything like that. So you get like... A You're death. vaporized. Mm-hmm. So you get a death and a cremation all in one. Yeah. So maybe it was quite a good value I don't think in terms you can get of a trip. Cremated in water. I don't think it'd be called cremation. All right, death and vapor, death by vaporization. Yeah. Expensive, though. That's like a new. That's if like you, a new way of dying. Were, like, imagine they were lost. It's like they were still alive. No implosion, right? They were just lost, and you're inside the submarine, right? And you're like, we've got thirty minutes of oxygen left. We ain't. We ain't making it out. Would you suck a dick? I was I was saying this when I was in the queue going in there. I was like, do you reckon they're all stood around having a little circle jerk? One last one. And the, the father and son are just trying not to make eye contact with each other. What would, do they have in the middle of the PlayStation controller? Yeah. Just open it. Would you just, come back to laugh. Would you just, for 
I'm, I'm assuming you've never sucked a dick. What? So would I just do it for a laugh? Like? <laughs> As my, as what? my, that would, so I've what? never, because I've never sucked one, you think it might be my dying wish. That'd be your last no, thing. No, not your dying wish, but you're at, like, at 4,000 meters. Do you know, like, when, when, level. like, uh, you know, when, when, like, you're in prison and you're like, well, I'm here anyway. Mm, I don't think, right, no. do you think it's the, like, do you know, when you have those final thoughts, like, where Maximus in Gladiator is walking through the fields well, and, thinking, and just, just touching the head and, and, like, Joe's final thoughts, the first thing it goes to is him noshing some guy off. Yeah. Would I don't you? think so, no. I think I'd be more concerned with like, oh, I'm going to die in half an hour. My, my, my brain yeah, wouldn't immediately you... go to, oh, that's made me really horny for some dick, mate. Yeah, like, I yeah. don't... Do you reckon time slows down when you know yeah, you've got half an hour left? You're in a fucking like, the longer you're like, fucking hell, this is taking its time. No, like, think... It'd be like two of these sofas and we'd all be sat, sat with our legs folded. Mm-hmm. It's tiny. It wasn't even a real PlayStation controller either, was it? It was a Logitech phone. PlayStation came out and they were like, just let you know, this is not nah. an official piece of PlayStation. I read, I read an article about the geezer who um, like made the sub as well, the one who drives it. And I think the reason he had to drive it every trip was as like a safety guarantee. Because this article was about like all the corners that they'd cut to build this submarine, basically. So the the glass on the viewing panel was only certified down to... 1500 meters and they were going four and a half thousand was it but did he get two no okay no nah. <laughs> said you buy one you get one free didn't even double said you buy one you get one free didn't even double up like raj when he's not sure about the sneaky link in it but they uh double yeah, up. He, he <laughs> i doubled down baby <laughs> <laughs> i rolled dices <laughs> Should have gone to save glass, mate. <laughs> but yeah, it's not so the, the, the glass was only certified to 15 and So it wasn't meters. double glazing then? Nah, no double glazing. This was single glazed Victorian housing. The <laughs> submarine With the hall wooden was, trim around yeah, the side. It's fucked, rotten. The, the submarine hall was, uh, is always spherical uh, because it makes the pressure even at all points. But this one was a cylinder and they were like, you probably shouldn't do that. And he's like, nah, it's fine. The, the, the rigging and ballast that was on the outside of it was like old scrap parts yeah, that, he'd, that he'd put on it and, now, and he was like, yeah, but they're not um, structurally integral, so it doesn't matter. And that's and what you released to let yourself go yeah. to the... And then he didn't even get the the submarine certified because he, knew, yeah. because he knew he couldn't. Like, because they'd rip it apart and go, no. But it'd been down twice, though. Yeah. Yeah, but so, I saw that. I saw the letter that they sent the uh, the certification company who, like, cover all the... Mo- and they were making claims like, oh, it will be certified. And they wrote them a letter saying... Like, just to let you know, like, you need to go through rigorous prototype testing with no people in it before we need to witness that and um, this, that, and the other. And they just ignored it. That was, like, mm-hmm. back in, like, 2018 or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and I think, like, 2021, they did a dive, like, a test dive, and loads of shit was going wrong. And the bloke was like, don't worry about it, though. We'll have that fixed by the next one. So yeah, the bloke who went down on it was, like, literally, we lost comms yep. pretty much straight away. Yeah, he's like, we lost comms within, like, 500 metres. So it was a mess. But... So I reckon him driving it was his way of being like, I'm so confident in its safety despite all of that. Oh, I'll, man, I think I'll go down with you. I think they're on the run. From who? I think he was getting sued left, right and centre and all the rest of them, man, on the run as well. Okay. I felt bad for the the young kid who was on it because he only went down there because he's, he was on Father's Day. Yeah, yeah I mean, mo- yeah, I heard that. His mum was supposed to go, innit? Really? His mum was supposed to go Shit. before, but the trip got, got postponed. So then... Because he then got really like fascinated with like yeah oh, I'd quite like to go actually so his mom let him go and and he was trying to break the world record for the yeah do lowest Rubik's, Rubik's, Rubik's cube he can complete a Rubik's cube in like sixteen want... seconds or something and he, he had well he had half an hour to do it so surely he might have, you never know he might have done it but we'll never know <laughs> we'll right? never know maybe you'll just we find the just Rubik's give it to him yeah, yeah we'll I'll just find the Rubik's him. cube somewhere. Like, well. did they have Rubik's Cubes when the Titanic went down? I'm not sure. How old was the Rubik's Cube, do you I don't reckon? think so, but... Would you not think as well, like, I don't know. What? Half of the, the wreck of the Titanic isn't even there anymore, is it? Cause it's they, washed didn't they, away. Didn't they pull it up in, like, 97? They, like, did, like, a whole operation to, like, pull half of it up. Hasn't Just, James Cameron been to it 40 times? Yeah, and James Cameron said, the sub that I went down in back when I was making Titanic was more advanced than the sub that he's going down in 2023. So why didn't they just use that? Right. Some cheap, some guy who's just started up his own company, isn't it? Basically, like he it's like when be, you, um, you know, when you go on holiday and you're like, right, I'm going to go in this like, I'm, I'm off the coast of South Africa and I'm going to go shark diving. I would just like that. that, where just some random Donny just like pulls up in his fucking boat and then chucks a tank out the side of it and you go down and Mass. it's just like I don't know this guy. I've not really researched the background. Do you, fucking, do you hear I'm, about his wife? 
what about her? So the, his wife, great great grandparents, yeah, were yeah. in the original Titanic. Yeah, Shit. they were in the film. If you remember, there was a couple that turned. They were rich. They owned Macy's, the department store, mm. and they refused to get on any of the lifeboats because obviously the rich were first, right? So they refused to get on any of the lifeboats. And I don't know if you remember this scene from the film, but they got into bed. Oh, and they still cuddled. Oh, that and, they and then cuddled. the water spills over them. And then the water, yeah, that was meant to be that. Oh, yeah. I thought it, I thought they they survived their great great grandparents. Did they not? No, I skimmed that bit. Yeah, they 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 got in bed ready to die. Yeah, is that why she wanted to go down in the first? I'm place? guessing that there was a little fascination. Go but if there's <sighs> there's one family that should maybe stay away from the Titanic, it's probably them. The ones that are already cursed by it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a weird thing though, isn't it? Going down and looking at shit. How just... weird that we were talking about Danny DeVito in the Titanic, and then, isn't it? Yeah. Then the Titanic. He'd have been able to stand up in back. there, swing his legs. <laughs> He'd have been doing fucking cartwheels. <laughs> Danny DeVito's doing pull-ups doing a in that bad boy. In the sun. <laughs> I just think it's... yeah, it actually looked like he was in an actual submarine, <laughs> like a full-size one. It's just, it's just the, the, the obnoxiousness of the super rich, though, isn't it? Yeah. Of, of like. Oh, but how much sympathy have you got? Yeah, no, like, I don't think it is, man, because a lot of people turned down that journey. Yeah, I saw that Mr. as well. Mr. Beast. Loads of people turned it down. Yeah, but I still think it's... You've got to have some element of, like, I've got all the money in the world, so everything's achievable. So what can I do now that's ridiculous? So it's like the people that like signed up for SpaceX or rich people that climb Everest. They're yeah. Still, still well, like when Richard like Branson... Richard Branson goes around the world in a fucking hot air balloon. It's yeah. like, just fuck off, mate. But like, do you know when you sign up to this shit, like, oh, it's dangerous. But you're obviously thinking, I think well, I've paid, a... I've paid 250 grand, so I'll probably be all right. It's because they're that narcissistic that they just want to tell all the fucking mates that they've been to see the Titanic. Yeah. They're probably not even that arsed about it. Well, they ended up telling the world. Yeah. yeah. I also think there's a huge difference with like going above and, and going below. Well, isn't the what is that in terms of oh like, space and like water, water. That, oh, like okay. that deep in the water is ridiculous. Yeah, like, that's like insane, isn't it? Really? Yeah, like I mean, I, I don't know if you've seen that documentary. I, it might be a David Attenborough thing with the all the fish light up and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's a mad shit at the bottom of there, like aliens. The, the fish down there are crazy, bro. Yeah. And what's the what's the percentage of the seafloor of all the sea that's never been explored? I was just going to say that. It's, it's 70%. Something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's mad. Because I remember watching The Abyss when I was a kid, and it was literally just, they sent like a, a submersible down. Was it into the Mariana Trench? That's like one of the deepest ones, isn't deepest it? Yeah. Point. Yeah, and they had like a camera fitted to it. And they just, it was just like, I can't remember. It was like a fucking... Whole program, they just cut it together of like all the shit that the camera picked up, and it had like a polystyrene cup strapped to the outside of it to show the effects of like water pressure on on things as it gets like. Just gonna uh, just end up being like that, like a little sandwich. Yeah, it's really hot at the bottom as well Mm -hmm. because of the volcanoes. Really? Yeah, it's mad, mad. I'm I'm with you. I'm like, if someone said to me like, you want to go see the Titanic. I, I like old shit in it, so I'd be like, oh, I'm interested, but I'd just go watch the film again. Yeah, I'd be like, oh, is it back in the cinema? Yeah, About, you know shall we I mean? go see the I'd just be like, museum send in a fucking, yeah, send, send like a fucking mechanical thing down there to yeah, pick the shit up and then I'll look at it. I'll watch it on Netflix, and it? Well, the, 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 the real then. sad bit is that they went all that way and the, the motherfucker had no windows, did it? It had the viewing thing, but you couldn't see No, I thought see it was all a, digital. Nah, so it had this viewing perspex fucking weird thing, but... When you're down there, because everything cut out, they were like, when you're that deep, sunlight only penetrates like so many hundred meters or whatever. So you can't see your hand in front of your face when you're down there. So they've gone down there and then they just sat in the dark room. Mad. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just thinking about that video. You said perfect. You know that Asian guy going, I'm underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Someone on I send help. I couldn't help me. Help me I'm in the water. water. It's <laughs> raining. I just when you said that window, that's, I literally just saw his face <laughs> in the window. I love that video. Oh man, yeah, mad though. But yeah, I was I was checking in on it. I also think it's like quite because was it the Coast Guard or the Navy that came out and they were like, yeah, we heard the 
we heard the explosion, but we obviously had to wait to confirm from like debris and stuff like that. But I'm sure it was the same people who put out pretty much like day two of the search. Their their actual quote was, "Well, yeah, I mean, the submarine's a very small thing, and we searched in the ocean, which is a very big space." That was all they said, <laughs> and I was like, "These guys are basically gone. We're never finding." Them. Oh yeah, yeah, they knew, man. We're never finding. But they they got alerted to it by like underwater secret underwater microphones, didn't they? So no, yeah, and they they basically said we heard banging noises, but then they came out afterwards and they said we heard the explosion. We just couldn't put it out in the news. And but go. it didn't even reach as low as the the U.S. nuclear something submarine that just sits, it just roams around the bottom. I thought it went, I thought it went down like 3,000, 3,500 metres. Did it? Because yeah. they lost communication at about an hour something, didn't they? Do you reckon they could find like aliens living underwater? Do you reckon like, they, they come from the bottom up? What, like fucking, um, what's it called? The city? Atlantis? Atlantis, the great Ooh. city, the lost city of Atlantis. Mm. Do you reckon they could be like aliens just like... Under. Underwater. Or, or, or the Gungans. Remember Jar Jar Binks and all his man? Yeah. Underwater? That'd be pretty sick. How would they get there? You they just, just grow. And like, it, right? But they're that low that no so one knows they where they are. aliens if they're born on this earth. That's a good point. Yeah. Are you, are you Science, still bitches. Are you still considered an alien? No, because you're not a foreign... You know, that's why they call immigrants aliens. Mm-hmm. Illegal aliens, but there is, there are an alien. Or the Meg. You ever seen the Meg? The it's Megalotron. The what? <laughs> Megalotron. <laughs> Megalodon. 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 That's off, that's off some of fucking Transformers. <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> Megalodon. Megatron. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I watched that film. A kind of. It's not very good, but no. <laughs> I don't know. I, I was I was I was invested until I wasn't. As soon as they were like, "Yeah, they're done," I was like, "I think we should explore more of the seabed, though. It's more interesting than space. I think because space, you just have to go so far to fucking see so little. Whereas the seabed, there, seabed's fucking just below you. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Invest some more money in it. What if you made like an armored suit? What like the old diving suit? Yeah, but then that Not would like would that crush one. it? What, so you wouldn't even want to be in a sub. You'd just want to have a line <laughs> attached drop to you. you and just get dropped like an anchor. Yeah, line attached is the key fucking word. And then word. what happens when some big fucking sea creature just comes and snaps you? Well, what happens when you're eating something and a bit of hair is in your food? Oh, so you want them to build you a suit that you can go diving in, but you can still have your luscious hair coming out the top? No. What do you do? Like you're eating a burger and a bit of hair's in it from the chef. What do you do? You go, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I want him to do when the metal hits his teeth. Yeah, but I don't know if that's that's. <laughs> yeah, his happen. his is too strong for their teeth. Like yeah, but, that level uh, of too strong for a, a, a sea creature we've not even discovered yet. Yes. So how are we gonna build that? We're, yeah, we're gonna make it taste like fish because they like they eat. Yeah, fish. yeah, that's true. We'll make it taste like something they don't like. Okay. How do you know what they like? They don't like plastics in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> So you want to pollute the ocean? Yeah. Make so it taste like a fucking lake. I'm just going to go in there like a Sainsbury's forever bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good thing. a lot of work it? on bag for life. So that's the thing. Do you know if it's a ba- forever bag? Do you know if it... <laughs> that should be what it's Someone called. Someone got paid to come up with bag for life. Oh, bag for like, life's worse. a forever bag, please? <laughs> Do you know if you don't use a bag for life, surely that's worse than just getting a bag that's not for life? Because a bag for life surely lasts longer. And then if you're not keeping it for life and it goes somewhere else, it's got a life somewhere else. Bro, if someone at Sainsbury's maybe pay for a fucking carry bag the other day, it was 30p, bro. Yeah, yeah, they're 30p now. Are you mad? Yeah. I remember I went shopping with my dad and I was like, yeah, give us a couple of bags. He went there, 30p. We all squeeze everything in one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like bulging at the seams. It's like, this, this, the, the bag's lifespan is about three hours. <laughs> but they do swap them if they rip. You swap them for free. Yeah, what? but then it's not a bag for life, is it? It's just... Yeah, if you have a bag for life and it rips, you go to the shop and they will swap it for free. Who's got the time? Well, if you're already in there, you're meant to take the bag with you. Uh, who's got the time? Well, I've got a bag full of bags in my car. A little forever bag full of forever bags. A tote bag full of forever bags. Okay. All well, right. when I was at Glastonbury, I, I worked with the recycling team doing volunteer work because I'm a responsible guy and I really care about the planet. Did you get a free ticket? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And, but what's mad is each person, it gives you an appreciation for the amount of shit that we just chuck away. Each person gets rid of, on average, 10 kilograms of waste at the festival, and there's 200,000 people. What's the maths? That's like fucking 2 million tonnes or something like that. Mad, isn't it? Yeah, when I was leaving on, on Monday, like, 
it is mad. You just look around and it's like a, it's like a battlefield, isn't it? At the end, yeah. of the, Like it's there's just shit strewn everywhere. People passed out in the field. Tents have been left. There was like little fucking little tramps roaming around, like just nicked. It's it like a war zone, isn't it? it? It's like the after effects of a yeah, war zone. Yeah, there was people that snuck into the festival and then were just nicking shit from people's campsites and stuff. Yeah, like obviously shoes. that's gonna happen. What do you do? How do you secure your shit? Hmm? No, I know. I mean, once everyone had left, there's people going through being like, "I'll just store some biscuits in here. Let's have that." Yeah. So, did you have to stay for the cleanup project? No, but there are people that do that, and yeah, after and that. after they have to do like fine picking, which is you going through the because it's got to be like a grazing land for the animals that are on the farm after. So they're literally going through and picking up cigarette nubs and like the smallest shit possible. Don't they get a big it's party be, afterwards? Though? It's got to be no. easier to vacuum mm. that shit. Isn't it? That's what I was thinking this while I was at the festival. Surely, like, someone could come up with like a vacuum that just recycles waste now. Like a big combine harvester type thing. That yeah. Just sucks it all up. But it just sucks it all up and then it goes like metal, plastic, bang, into two f- sections, food waste in the middle. That's compost. Yeah. Just motor along, mm. sucking it up like fucking Nunu. Nunu. <laughs> That's what I call it. Nunu. Yeah. It'd just be like that, but like a recycling version of Nunu. I think that'd be quite good. Yeah. Invent that shit. The place is sick, though. I will, I, will, I will try and go again. It was very good. Yeah, maybe I'll come next year. Yeah, man. I'll perform next year. That's how you'll get me there. there yeah, I think it's, yeah, that's a good possibility that yeah. that will happen, so. I'm going to try my best mm. to Glastonbury 24. But yeah, it was, it was good. Guest the headliner next year. Taylor Swift will be one. Um, Wouldn't surprise me if Harry Styles was another one. Think Blur or someone like that might be the third. Blur. They'll do a little throwback headliner, but Taylor Swift's almost guaranteed at this point, isn't it? Why? Because they tried getting her this year. She couldn't because of her tour dates. Then Emily Oh, Eve- that's why I wasn't there as well. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. And then Emily Evis was like, we tried getting a female headliner for this year. Um, she couldn't do it, but we've already got her for next year. And then. Oh, so you're cheating. Give me another one. Uh, Don't give me I, educated guesses. I, I want ha- fantasy and hope. I still think Harry Styles, the way he's Spice Harry Girls. Styles, and you think? Oh, I think Blur or something Blur. like that. But I imagine like a fantasy one would be like Spice Girls or something like that. I'll tell you the most random thing that I watched this weekend was... You didn't tell me your best, worst, and... Um, best, worst, and... I best, I probably, Alton John. I did watch Guns N' Roses yeah. because... Um, Girlfriend wanted to go and watch them. I was actually pretty impressed. One thing that I don't get as well is like how I think as a population, we're quite like ageist because we'll watch someone who's like an old performer like Axl Rose and be like, oh my God, that guy's he's fucking shit. He can hardly sing. It's like the guy's in his 60s, smashed drugs all his life, been a fucking rock star all his life. And then you've got someone on the different end of the spectrum where it would be like, say someone like Lewis Capaldi, who's obviously got some issues of his own but everyone kind of celebrates that, which is great. But why? Why do not? Why do, why do people not celebrate Cause, older cause people doing? Lewis well? is in his prime, and oh. you you've paid money to see someone in their prime. Yeah, yeah but he he was having ticks. That's what I'm saying. But he was struggling more than Axl Rose, I would say. And yeah, but that's something he can't control. Uh, yeah, but whereas, uh, yeah, but neither you, you can't control neither's being getting old. old and you can't control. Yeah, but you can turn changing. down a gig if you're not able to give the but, people. But he what was they good. He was good though. That's the thing that I thought. Like I just find it weird how. It's the same with people like Owen oh, and John. They're like, when, when someone old gets on stage, like same with Blondie, I don't think they get the respect that they deserve sometimes. Because imagine being that old and fucking doing something like that for two hours. All right, go on, go You're on stage. You were on stage for two hours? They were, two, they were on for two hours, Guns N' Roses. Singing's easier than comedy though, isn't it? What, well, r- you're playing the hits that you know everyone likes. But yeah. the, I, I, get, I get Jason's point. I never really thought about it before, but it's obviously like Axl Rose was getting stick for how he sounded. Because... Obviously, in his prime, he was like, you know, like, ah, I was screaming. Nah, he can't do that no more because his, his throat's fucked. His voice is fucked. But I, I was at the Lewis Capaldi thing. I didn't really have anything else I wanted to go see. So I thought, I'll go see that. And it was one of them where it was like, we were stood there going, this will be one of them moments that they talk about. And it, the whole crowd pulled him through, singing, whatever. But I do get your point of kind of like, I think he's just, he's flavour of the month, isn't he? He's, he's the nation's sweetheart at this point. Everyone loves him. Yeah, I, I so like him. I like him as, side, a, as a character. I mean? Yeah, but it's just weird how people have a different approach to judging someone on their performance based on a lot of different factors. But age is such a big one, I feel. Like when, you, when you're going to watch someone that's old, the first thing you're thinking is, oh, they're old, they're going to be shit. Well, it's the same as like... Um, I, I I feel like I had a point to make there and I, I can't... Oh, yeah, it's, it's the same as like the Arctic Monkeys thing, though, isn't it? 
you had a lot of people leaving going, I can't be asked to listen to this shit. It's really obnoxious. And, and he's just... But he's a he's, rock star. What the fuck do you expect? But then you had that girl going, but I know he wanted to please us. And it's like, she just loves him more than the people who left it. Yeah. You know what I mean? One of the most random yeah, thing I watched. On, sorry, what's the most random thing? The most random thing I watched was I went to watch the one of the secret headline, well, secret guests, and it was the Blossoms, which are an indie band from from Manchester, with Rick Astley <laughs> performing the Smiths' back catalogue. Yeah, that was weird. It was weird. I read that somewhere, and I thought I was I thought I was getting it, Rick. Wrong. It was funny. No, it was Someone good. came past me, and they went, "What's on here?" And I was like, "It's Rick Astley and the Blossoms playing the Smiths." And he was like, "Very funny." I mean, you've just made that up, haven't you? Mm-hmm. I was like, I know it sounds like I've just put into a random generator of fucking bands that should play together and what they should play, but that was it. It was good, but then I thought Morrissey will be fucking turning his grave. Yeah, with we, we, we dropped in. <laughs> well, in the, even though he's still alive. Yeah, but we, we, we dropped in and I was like, this is pretty cool, but I can't stand the Smiths. So I was like, oh, do you know what? I love the Smiths. I hate the Smiths. But the thing is that Rick, Rick Astley is such a cheerful guy. The Smiths or Morrissey is just not a cheerful I guy. I was with depressing music. Like, I'm just like, life's hard enough, isn't it? I'm well, why did you go and watch Fred again then? Because Fred again's still, <laughs> still a part, isn't it? Sad, sad guy. No, so, it's sad so, in a sense of a lot of his songs are about like mental health and shit, innit? But you're not yeah. listening to that when you're absolutely fucked and you're just listening to someone do fucking, you know. <laughs> that's all you're, you, you, you're listening to, isn't it? What, that's yeah. his music? Yeah, it's very dancing. Yeah. He sold out all his Ali Pali shows today in seven minutes. Like, the guy's... So, yeah. so you lot didn't see each other? We, we were saw each other in passing, yeah, while I was working. You, did you both go to see Central C? No, I didn't actually. I watched... Who was on before? I saw it up until he bought out Dave. And then I, I was going to watch something else, so I watched that and then left. I watched whoever was on... Before Guns N' Roses. Okay. I can't remember who I went to watch actually before that. No, I can't remember. My brain's gone blank. Interesting. Watched the DJ for a bit. Just a DJ? In in a place called San Remo. Not just any DJ. Oh. No. Um, I only know Rodigan. Yeah. I was surprised that he wasn't there actually. Who's that? David Rodigan. David Rodigan, who's that? He's like an old dub plate. DJ. Oh, no okay. one talks about his age. He's a legend. He's a legend. I feel, I feel like you can get away with it a bit more when you're a DJ. Yeah, like fucking yeah. what Craig Charles had a stroke a few months ago and he was. Did class. he? Is he the guy from Red Dwarf? Yeah, yeah, yeah he's he was class. class. When I saw Craig Charles and Didn't realise he had a stroke. Yeah, two hours that was of just him playing old fucking funky yeah, soul he's records. Class. It was sick. But, uh, yeah, that was. What cool. time did you not get to bed and shit? It ranged between like. 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. or something like that. And do you have campfires and shit? No. I mean, you can do it if you want, but I don't think... You're allowed. All right, listen. If we go next year and get in a truck... You can get that. You can get that. No, no, we we are getting a camper van. Okay. I'm not sleeping on the ground. I slept on a flat air mattress for like four nights. Right, this is an issue. You should have said I got air mattresses for days, bro. Oh, I had. I I bought one. I pumped it up night one, but then it went flat and I couldn't be asked to pump it up. This was one of the issues I had, right? Is this a thing? Because I've not Googled it yet. Basically, I was sleeping downhill. Yeah, I've made... So your head was... So my feet were fucking killing by like Friday. Because I got there Wednesday, camp from Wednesday. By Friday, my feet, they're still hurting now. And... What a few people were saying that I camped with that was because when you sleep and the the blood obviously goes to your feet, so then it just makes them swell and yeah. makes them hurt. Is that so, a thing? Yeah. So like when my, when my grand like last year when she wasn't doing too well, her feet were really swollen, right? And so they, the hospital gave her a bed where when she sleeps, her feet are in the air. Got to elevate yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like on a hill because that was the only place to camp. So you got to sleep and that that way on it. Yeah, I, and I was like sleeping like that. My feet weren't elevated. My feet are absolutely killing now. This swollen. It looks like I've got club foot. I look like Lord Byron, mate. Probably from all the Show two him. step in as well. Show him, <laughs> mate. I, I, I'm gonna have to cut myself out of this trainer later. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun weekend, but it was a it was a tough one. It's a slog, isn't it? Mm. I think I I didn't really hit it too hard in terms of staying out late, having. Loads of drink, anything like that. I know he was hardly slept. This guy, yeah, hardly. Yeah, yeah. I was. I was. It's just the it, physical man. demands of the festival. Like you're doing probably thirty to forty thousand steps a day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm off to. I'm off to a festival next week, bro. Well, you oh. like you, dog? Nah, two thousand trees. Oh shit, yeah, cool. two thousand yeah. trees. Where is this? Cheltenham. Can I come? I mean, I submitted my form this morning, but I'm sure I can add a plus, plus one. one, plus two. What day is it? 
the eighth next week. Yeah, so yeah, that's a Saturday, indie, isn't it? Indie rock festival from Friday to Saturday. I went there a few years ago with Celia. It was alright, to be fair. Me uh, and Luke Chilton rolling up. Oh yeah, what playing performing? Yeah, yeah, he's performing as well. But yeah, it was good fun, man. Let me know. Do you want to do a question this week? Let's hit him with a question. See, you didn't have to do all that. You could have just listened to me. Singing the tunes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what else I didn't realise as well? Sorry, like when we were in there, because it's mad, because like, you get no signal. You don't bother looking at your phone that much anyway. And then like obviously the submarine thing was going on, but then you come out and it's like, oh, there might be a coup in Russia. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it's like. like. Yeah, I was, I was like, like, what? Yeah, there's, there's rumours spreading around the camp yeah, it? I was like, that what Wagner the... Group is like, is that someone who's performing this weekend? <laughs> So Wagner we, Group are going to have a cause a civil war. That that one threw me afterwards. I was like, I thought like that's something that I should have. Didn't that guy who today. runs Wagner Group used to be like a fucking chef? Yeah, it's all funded by like the Russian state as well, or something. Like that. He used to be a weird, chef for man. Putin, and he's cooked for like Tony Blair before. Is it? Yeah, Is it just poison. That's what he was. He was just a caterer before. A legend, game on. Do you know what I mean he used to be flipping burgers? Now he's flipping governments, mate. Yeah, game on. We'll we'll get Ben back. <laughs> yeah, mate, he's, he's too busy now. He's overthrowing the fucking British government. Like, what's Ben doing? You know what I mean? Michelin star. Have bigger dreams. Fucking hell, Ben. Come on. All right, question. Got them. Um, choose a number between 1 and 69. 62. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, 61. No, I'm going to ask 64 or 60. Okay. All right. Your task with introducing a new ridiculous event to the Winter Olympics, what is it? Ooh. Um, ah, like building snow. It build the best snow, man. Imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that it's halfway through. You've got people doing like ski jump and bobsled and that. And then you just go. Build. Are nah, you seven, bro? Add that to what's the one where they've got to do all the shit. Like they've got to do like cross country skiing. Then they gotta like stop and shoot a target. Oh, and then yeah. they cross country again and they gotta do something else. Just halfway through, just be like, you gotta build the best snowman. Halfway what and then shoot and then shoot it. And then shoot his head <laughs> off with your rifle. And what about the it. like if you did like the I, I quite like the skeleton one that they do. Skeleton Bob. Skeleton so Bob. Like but like a, a more extreme version of that. Because they go down, it's pretty extreme anyway, isn't it? They go down head first. Yeah, yeah they just put some more well. like. Full just put some full oh, like, like, like half like pipes. A water slide. <laughs> yeah, some, like full turns. <laughs> what the one where it flips you off the end? <laughs> yeah, like I want to see the Audi. And then they go into ice cold water. <laughs> I want to see the Audi logo just <laughs> in the middle. Olympic rings. They have to go around yeah. the Olympic rings. Yeah. Oh, it's a bit like the snow though. Yeah. You just get in a little fucking inner tube. <laughs> yeah, but like the, the momentum will take them through, right? Yeah. That, that, that'll be fun. I think they should just have swimming as part of the winter. Literally. I'd want to make like yeah. ice hockey, right? But they have two sticks and they're allowed to kick the ball as well. <laughs> what? It's completely changing the scope yeah. of the game. And like the goals are big, like five a side. So they've still got, they've still got like ice skates on, blades and that. Yeah, but, but they can man, kick like, it. Two foot tackling each they other can with kick the blades it. On. They can two foot tackle, but they'll have guards and stuff on, like proper. Oh, that's good then. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah proper little, little shin pad and that. All right. Yeah, but yeah, like if you because if you slide someone's blades, that's not going to hurt them. You know what I mean? You're going to roll their ankle. Your weight will just take you over. It's not. It's, you're not going to put pressure on the actual ankle. Do you know what I mean? Have you ever actually watched the Winter Olympics? Yeah, I think I've watched it a few times. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Neither have I. I'm just like, nah, I barely watch the actual Olympics. Nah, I like some sports. in the. I watch like 100 metres when that's on. I watched that new, uh, I, don't, well, I don't know if it's new. It was called uh, The Redeem Team on Netflix. And it's about the US men's basketball Olympic team. basketball yeah, yeah, team. Yeah. That, that's sick. It. So it's all about how like, they, they, it was just a given that they just won all the time. And then they had like some some humiliating loss years and years and years ago. So then they just started letting like NBA players play for the Olympic team as well. And then again, it was like, well, we're going to win then. And then they went to, was it the 2004 Olympics? And they got humiliated by Greece. So then they were like, right, so we've got all these NBA players, but we've got to like pull an actual team together. So they put like a whole structure in place for the national team and it's all about how like they bought Kobe Bryant in and stuff like that and he was like the secret ingredient it's a, it's a sick film though it's like, yeah, I fell asleep in it 
Yeah, it's pretty good. I put it on. I put it on planning to fall asleep, but then I got invested. Yeah, maybe yeah. you should introduce that to the Winter Olympics basketball. Basketball with ice skates, but just on. ice skates. Yeah, with basketball. No, it's, way, it's, be- way better than your fucking <laughs> at Robot Wars. Creation. No, no, no. <laughs> no, nah, if but I was going to Charles, we'll yeah. get Craig Charles back as well and no, Sir fuck Killer Lot. You lot. It's, it's fucking. It's good. You would be it's Sir Killer Lot. I think fuck, if you were a robot. You, fuck you both. <laughs> Um, no, it'd have to be a snowball fight, innit? But between countries. Nah, you gotta wrestle a polar bear. No. That'd be pretty sick. I'm trying to kill people. Out of here. <laughs> <laughs> in, like full armor, in full armor. In your That's diving, how we'll in your test. fancy diving. That's suit. how we'll test a submarine suit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stick it in the Winter Olympics. <laughs> yeah, I reckon it's, it's gotta be somewhat mad, then it, you know what I mean? I don't know. Well, it's gotta be a snowball fight. And like, oh could you imagine like fucking Iraq versus USA. That's <laughs> it. I don't need to imagine it, but it's been happening anyway, for quite some happening time. For fucking it's gonna ages. be like tension there, man. It's like a derby, bro. What, so like a, you build like a paintball esque type course out of like yeah. igloos, yeah, of, but of like Fallujah, no, like and then you, you send it, him in with snowball, snowball fight, capture the flag. Okay. So you you got guns that fire out snowball pellets, and you got like towers that you can throw cannonballs that are ice. And you got to get the opposition's flag. Okay. It's smart and it will work. Yeah. The nation will be locked. I f- yeah, I feel like the Winter Olympics does need some work, really, just to make it as popular as the summer one. What about... And you can still slide tackle. What about you get all the, the, peop- all the finalists from the last Olympics 100 metres and you make them run the 100 metres still in trainers but on ice? That would be pretty funny to watch, I think. Just watching them stack yeah. it. All the hurdles no, what, would be No, what about funny. ice that like is, is slowly cracking, that's quite thawing, so some of them Why will fall. Why is it going to be evil? Yeah. Why is it going to be evil? And there's polar bears chasing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the ice is just melting because they've got heaters on it. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. And then it could be a statement about global warming. Why couldn't well. it have been a nice sport? <laughs> What? Why couldn't it have been a nice sport? Because I don't watch the Winter Olympics anyway. I'm not going to watch it if they go out of added a snowball fight. Snowball fight would be sick. I'm not watching that. Did they do though. it? You did, would. No, did, if they put blood would. sport in, I'd blow out. I'm watching that. There did might they? be blood. Yeah, and think it. how good the blood's going to look on the ice. Did mm. they do a Winter Paralympics? I don't know, you know. I know they do a summer one, but I don't know whether they do a winter one. Wait, you're going to just push a man in a wheelchair sure down the fucking skeleton think, bob track. Well, I think the, the thing about the Paralympics, though, I always used to watch the Paralympics when I was younger, but it's. The problem with that is sometimes it's more unfair than the actual Olympics because the categories are so wide that people are competing in, as in the disability category that they're in. They might be a T34 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Beijing Winter Paralympics. But then everything that's in it, it someone could be just a, a massive disadvantage. So what are the sports in the Winter Paralympics? Well, yeah, like do, they I, have, do they have like um thingy hockey? Like, yeah, like, like not the wheelchair, they have but like wheelchair sled basketball. Hockey. But... I think I've oh, seen that. Oh, this is mad. Because I'm just thinking, like, skeleton... You wouldn't do skeleton, but if you do, like, bobsled. Yeah, that's... Imagine that's just that must be scary. It. Yeah, he's strapped in, no That's legs. the mental thing, isn't it? Fuck you've got no... Yeah. Like, you've got no way of getting out. Saying that, you ain't got you've anywhere got to arms, stop in. Bro. You ain't got anywhere to stop in. You've got arms. fucking arms. You know yeah. what, actually? The Winter Paralympics is probably better, because if I'm doing... It's the, more uh, extreme. If I'm doing a skeleton bob... Yeah, I'd feel a lot more comfortable if someone was like, you could break your back doing this. And I'm like, I've already broke my back. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, yeah. I'm all right. I'm going for gold, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? Whereas like the skeleton bub looks like someone just waiting to die. You know, that's mental when they throw themselves into that fucking... Oh, my word. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I, do, you think the, do you think the Paralympics mascot should have some sort of disability? Does he not? You? No. What's he doing? It's like a... Christmas tree decoration. Just rubbing it in their face. That's a bit fuckery. All limbs. Mm. Mad. Yeah, but I don't really think... I, I think it's more just a sim, symbol of the games, isn't it? It doesn't need to be representative of the actual... Yeah, true. The London one was a big fuck-off alien thing, weren't it? Yeah. Uh, That's real, though. Mm, no, fair enough. Came from out of the sea. All right. So, snowball fight. We, what we're going to... It sounds like we're going to collab on something. That's gonna it's going to be a tournament. It's going to be a tournament. Yeah, I think it needs to be a collaboration, but then they also need to legalise steroids. Do you know what I mean? We had all that issue with the Russia team. You might as well just legalise it. Let that everyone come the... in fucking massive or yeah. charge up. I want to see records being broken. Yeah, why don't you just let sick, everyone though? do it? Like, stop fucking about it's it. Just like let an, everyone do the drugs. It's like a secret, isn't it? It's like, you're having, it's like you're having a ghostwriter for your music or something like that. It's like the unspoken thing. And then... It's the same thing with drug taking in sports. It's like, you know people are doing it. You know what, you know what would be sick? 
and like there's a there's a comedian on the on the UK circuit who's got a joke about it and it's it's fucking hilarious. But it's he basically says like the how the Olympics would be a lot more interesting if it was like jury duty and your name just got pulled out. And then it was just like, right, representing Britain in the 100 metres is Raj Pajara. And you've just got to go to Beijing and do the 100 metres against some next Donny from around the world. He was in, and it, it's true, isn't it? I remember the first time I watched him do it, I was like, I'd watch that. That'd be sick. That'd be funny. That would be funny. <laughs> so that'd be, a sick, that'd be a sick thing to add into the Olympics. Even if they just added it as like a side thing of just like, right, you've all got a number. No, that should be like a third Olympics. It'd be sick. Your social no, security fourth. number gets pulled out and they so go, you have, you're um, going. The normal Olympics, the Winter Olympics, no, Paralympics. Both Paralympics. Both Paralympics. You've got four and then you've got the Public Olympics. Yeah, that'd be sick. That should be an event, mm. 100%. What did like Prince Harry try to do? He did some like Invictus. Invictus what, Games what was, was that? the was... ex-military that were injured in oh, combat, was it? wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I never watched well, that. Well, he wasn't injured, was he? No. Oh, he created it, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Should have put snowball fights in it. Probably yeah. should have made a winter version. Yeah, and a Paralympic version. Oh, no, it was Paralympic. Yeah, it was. You, right. wouldn't, you wouldn't have wanted to do America versus Iraq in the fucking Olympics. No, nah, you already with some bloodshed. A bit of trauma. Yeah, I love how you've still got your Glastonbury band on, Joe. Yeah, I don't know. Like, when am I, how else am I supposed to let everyone know that I went? It's, uh, you know what I mean? Well, you've got a podcast you know here, broadcasting it to the Yeah, nation. true. You know what else I, f- I didn't realise about Glastonbury until I was there? It's a very middle class festival, isn't it? It is very, it's very white, middle the, the, class. No, yeah. it might not be. It's your first time there. No, there's a lot of people and that are like... It's quite expensive and it's a cost of living crisis. So, it's, so it's, it's free 50 a ticket. Yeah. Which, which to me, I'm like... And you can pay it off in instalments and that says so for me i think that's like not for everyone granted but i think it's like quite accessible for what it is a massive party you can pay it off in instalments it's the equivalent you know like you're going on holiday instead of going on holiday you could go there but the thing that got me was like the same people that are waving signs up going like kick out the tories and shouting fuck the tories at their favorite band you hear them at the bar and they're just like no it's my round i'll get this one yeah you can just cash at me later, guys. And yeah, it's I'm like, virtue signaling, bro. Yeah, but I'm like... It's, it's, yeah, that's the thing that I did. I do think. It's like, how much do you want to fuck the Tories? You don't want to fuck them that bad, do you? Yeah. That you want them out. And it's like... There was a guy... Oh, that was one... That was most annoying moment. Uh, shout out to the prick in front of me at Arctic Monkeys. I didn't really get too much... Like, he was Northern Irish, but he was dressed in red pants and he had a red bandana on with his top off holding a red guitar that he just proceeded to hold up through the whole of the gig. Actual guitar. An actual guitar that he brought into the gig. Just hoping he'd get pulled up, yeah. Must be an extension of his personality. And then he just held it up and he just said, fuck the Tories on it. It's just like... Oh, man, I bet he kept okay. getting it kept... the campsite as well. He mate, he like, kept oh, giving it everyone as well to like hold. And so towards the end, when they came on for like the last few songs, like me and my mate just rushed him because he was just... He was fucked as well. So he was just like waving it around everywhere, nearly hitting people. I'm just like, what is this? What are you... Yeah, see, I don't think I've got the patience for Glastonbury. There's just, yeah, there are a lot of people there and it's just like, you're just trying to fucking be the centre of attention here, aren't you? Like, no one gives a fuck about you, mate. Shove your guitar up your arse. You don't really want to fuck the Tories at all. You're fucking just sitting there babbling a load of shit. I find that quite tiresome anyway, to be honest. Like the whole... Like, you know, fuck the Tories, people slag people slag off Tories all the time in comedy and stuff like that. But my thing's always like, but they still keep winning. So like all these people, it's the same people where like, you know, when when Brexit happened, everyone was like, did you vote for Brexit? Who voted? Did you? Well, well, statistically, over half of us did. Yeah. yeah so and like, the rest of us couldn't be asked to vote. Yeah. And it's yeah, so just was I bad on you. that day. Mm. I was at Glastonbury and I didn't vote. So it's on, that's on me, isn't it, really? I oh, go... I went to vote and my car was underwater. Mm, not ideal. Do you they... remember that? De- that sounds made the... up. They planned that. That was Farage. That so, was... Uh... Uh, Raj Farage. Imagine he was my dad. Raj Farage. <laughs> Farage Pajara. Raj Farage. Raj Farage Pajara. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that annoyed me a bit, just, just looking around and just being like, a lot of trust fund kids here. There's a lot of yeah double standards They're going trying on. Trying to talk about equality and that, and it's like nah. yeah, but it's like how how far do you want to go? Okay, do you want to get tax more? Mm. Are you up for that? Do you want to give up some of your earnings? Maybe you want to give some some of your time to volunteering. Maybe you want to help people out who are less fortunate. You yeah, but that's you. the same as that like Ukraine stuff. You seen that video of that guy going round going, 
Uh, oh, you, you you think the refugees should come in? Um, would you keep them at your house? Yeah. Oh, oh no, sorry, I rent. Oh no, sorry, I rent. I don't have the space. Oh, so everyone on that march, not one person said yes. Yeah, I've seen that. Guy. So that like, yeah. So, and then if they took so it, so you out, were like, bring the refugees in, but not in my house. Like they're staying, they're staying at your yeah, house. Yeah, where are you going to send them? Like that's the thing. That's the other thing. People want to be seen to be doing the right thing, but a march means fuck all, doesn't and it? And I don't think that they should. That's be, not a solution. I don't think that they should be in anyone's house. I think there should be like hotels that are purchased by the government to be like, you lot stay here till we work something out. Yeah. What, the, rather than putting him in old prison camps and, yeah, and wild. abandoned army barracks and shit. Wild, yeah. like <clears throat> Even like the whole Calais thing with the fires and all that. I'm mad. I just think as well, like, the there was the bare people kicking off before Glastonbury in it about like, they've cancelled the Jeremy Corbyn film. They're not going to show the Jeremy Corbyn film. Brother, what the fuck are you going to Glastonbury to watch a Jeremy Corbyn film, man? They were doing a Jeremy Corbyn film at Glastonbury. Yeah, and I'm just... Again, and, 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 and then they scrapped it. Again, is anyone going to watch it? Who's going? Is it that? just something that someone's picked up on? Every time I walk past that left field protest tent, and I'm thinking, again, it comes back to that point of everyone's there for their own reason, and it. And I was thinking, I bet there's people that are in there every day because they want to go hear some debates and they want to like listen to like fucking what is his name, Billy Bragg or whatever he is talking about the union. But I'm like, nah, I want to do that. I want to go watch some fucking secret disclosure set off my head. So what, can I, I I think I'm going to do a performance at next year's Glastonbury, Mm -hmm. but it's not going to be comedy. Okay. I'm going to do something special. Something performative. Yes. About I'm going to make a hit single and perform it at Glastonbury. Uh, Sorry. (laughs) I know we said we won't talk about nonsense anymore. (laughs) Okay. But one thing I did want to bring up is I noticed that this year they changed the John Peel stage yeah. to Woodsy's. We looked at why. And is it because he's a nonce? Apparently, yeah. They must yeah. be pretty bad allegations. So everyone was like, because John Peel was all like championing like new music and all new that bands. shit, weren't they? But yeah. then how new were they? You know what I mean? Were they like, you know, school choirs and that? Cause they'd, Who's they'd, John Peel? So he's just like some guy that was like, he was... He was yeah, we, years and years ago, like he was like well known for being the guy that'd like give loads of like new musicians and stuff a chance on. He had like loads of radio input and stuff like that, didn't he? Yeah, he was and big then, on radio, big on like breaking new bands. Yeah, it's true because obviously I'd never been before, any, but I was, I was, I was with some people that had been like 10, 12 times, and as soon as they saw that it weren't called the John Peel stage anymore, one of them immediately went like, "Oh God, do you reckon he's a nuns?" and looked it up, and that was like the first. He married a fifteen-year-old. Um, called Shirley Ann Milburn in Texas, where it was the legal age in 1965 when he was 25. He maintained she lied about her age at the time. In an interview originally published in the Herald in April 2004, stated that Peel admitted to sexual contact with an awful lot of underage girls because he never asked for ID. Didn't do the maths. Didn't do the maths. He went mathing. Fair enough. So, what's your performance going to be? Sorry, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna a sing. Hit single. Yeah. Hit what about what? About my trap days. <laughs> <laughs> what? So you're gonna do it? You're gonna become a drill artist? Drill, drill, right. drill. Fair enough. Fair enough. Drilling. That was yeah. me drilling. Well, hopefully, I'll, I'll be there again. What? You coming backstage? Yeah. Run a triple A pass. Yeah. Pull me out, man. Pull you out from the crowd. Pull me out on stage. You spit some bars. I'll put a ballet on. Yeah, of course. Go on. Go on. Um, about what? Uh, it's about um trap days. It's yeah, called but trap like, days. It's called trap days. Trap yeah. days. What trap days? days? What days? Uh, all right. Um, not the traps when you doing shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's bars. You don't. You don't know about the trap. Trap. No cap. Cap. What you think? Because I'm white. I can't white. rap. Rap. Your ad libs are mad. <laughs> 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 the shittiest Migos you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm there. You got man. bars? You got bars for the trap life? Uh, I suppose. Go. Yeah, trap life. Trap life. Have you got a wife? Wife. Yeah, I called him the trouble and strife. Strife. I'm not cut out for this life. <laughs> and I'll just, and then I'll I'll be on the decks and I'll just go. Pull up. Pull it. Pull it again. And that's the whole hour set. <laughs> <laughs> it's just over. What you want it again? <laughs> when do you ask for the fat pussy girl? 
Um, Straight from the off, yeah, off, yeah, off the bat. Probably you, from the off, but we gotta do that early because we ain't getting any yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> After the set, they ain't gonna stick around. Yeah, that's four of you. Just see a lot of malnourished, someone fucking just, fake lefties turn up in there. Someone's just gonna be walking and, through the back saying he really wanted to give us a performance. You know, they, you know they were selling stick on like bindi spots in some of the, in, in some of the, in some of the things in some of the shops. Yeah, because hippie life, isn't it? Yeah, I didn't know how I felt about that because I didn't see a single Indian person at that <laughs> festival. For you didn't see a single Indian at Glastonbury? No. You're lying. No, I'm not even joking. <sighs> no. Saw a, few, saw a few black guys. Just a few? Just a few. It's a very Look white at, festival, mate. You want to watch, you want to watch proof that there was no ethnic minorities at this festival, go on the BBC iPlayer and watch the Krypton Conan set. I saw it, yeah. White. They're all just white teenagers. Do you think Krypton I could do... I walked past that. That sounded horrific. I think we should oh, I do. Go I, think, I, didn't go I think we should go next year and interview everyone. Yeah. 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 About fucking the Tories. Yeah, you'd meet some. Interesting yeah. How people. much do you want to fuck the Tories? Well, not yeah. so much that it impedes on any part of my life. The Tories will still be in power next year. Yeah. Let's do that. All right. And then, and then the rapping. Yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, we got a rap. As long as that's trap life. As long as trap days. What the fuck was it called? Uh, yeah, Trap Days. Trap Days. Maybe we'll record the album here in No Stars Podcast Room. They've got a studio next door, so... Um... Were you about to spit bars, rhyme in the room? Do you want me to do no. the... <laughs> Go. Jason's on the mic. Yeah. Jason's on the mic. What? You. Yeah. I'm tired. I'm fired. Retired. Retired. <laughs> uh, mate, I'm... It's the Wu Tang documentary. It's got me gassed. I reckon I could be a rapper. Yeah, go on. Then. Yeah, oh, I ain't got my book with me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> what off the top? <laughs> off the top of the bin? What are you talking about? This ain't crowd work, G. I got to fucking write some bars. <laughs> yeah. Imploded too much to fucking even speak at this point. Wrap it up, son. Yeah. Listen, thanks a lot for tuning in for this episode. It's been an absolute pleasure recording here. Um, after a weekend of pure tiredness. Yeah. And, and now I'm on the road to recovery. And it's great to have Joe here as well with me. He's been full of beans today. Don't Raj, always on fire, always on form. <laughs> and thanks for... Just like, subscribe, share, Did any clips smash? that we put up. Yeah. Just give him some love. And if if you were at Glastonbury, you let us know your best and worst gigs. And let me know if you were in uh, the carousel. Um, in the in the unfair ground at any point because I went in there uh, on on Saturday and the, the things I saw I never want to see again. I don't know how those people are still alive. It's a terrifying place. Oh, I you, thought you'd like met someone there that you wanted to shout. Yeah. Do you know how you have it on the metro? Page. It was just it was. It, I described it to Rose at one point. It's just going. This place is just pill nonsense. Like Did everyone you? in there was just rocked, just getting punched in the face by strobe lights. And also, uh, let us know if you know anyone who's ever been in a submarine. Uh, yeah, we'd like to we'd like to hear about that. And send that in. Did you? Yeah. And uh, any yeah, weird stories for, from Glasgow? Did you? <laughs> thanks for thanks, thanks you, for thanks for listening. Did you I've been smash in I've been I've been did you smash in Glasgow. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I literally said to him on the way in there. I was like, I don't know. Like you look around at people and you just like you just look dirty, man. Like nah, fuck that. Yeah. I mean, that's never stopped you before, Joe, but I'm glad to and see it. he's turned up a new Yeah, but listen, leaf. I was just out there just to find myself and have a, a spiritual awakening. Did and, that happen? Uh, I, think, I think I did that. Yeah, Good. I think I did that. I felt like a better man. He's had so. a spiritual awakening to realise that the toys aren't so bad after all. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> catch me with my flag next year. That says, love the toys. Going, are they really that bad? I wanted to put up a flag that just says, like... I support Andrew Tate. I would, I would ring <laughs> Sue Ella Brain. Is that what you were going to say? Fair enough. Well, anyway. Pretty Patel would get it. Yeah, that, yeah, but that's facts though. Because they know. don't know in what way. No, I just want free mm. Tate. Free Tate. Free Tate flag. Yeah, the top G. Top G. Uh, leader and thought. Got bold uh, for that. thought leader. No, that would be bold, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't have stood You got one of those faces you'd like to hit with a bottle as well. Yeah, you'd would... like to hit with a bottle. Or yeah. nunchucks. Well, as long as I could recycle or... that bottle, Raj. Yeah, you <laughs> pick that fun. up with your new, new Hoover. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, listen, Much thanks. Love. Peace. See, See you later. Yeah. Bye. This has been the Word on the Streets. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share.